All right, chapter 4. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more, for you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Paul says here, as for the other matters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. One of the things Paul had taught them was holy living, the importance of holy living. And he says that he wants them to do this more and more. What does that tell you about holy living? Continual? It's a growth, right? It's, continu it's a continual thing, and it's also a progressive thing. It's a progressive thing. So have any of us arrived? No, not in, not in the practicality of living holy lives. And then Paul gets specific here. He says that the church should be sexually pure. Verse 3 says, It is God's will that you continually be holy and avoid sexual sin. Verse 4 actually says, Each of you has learned, and for some of you you'll understand, that's perfect tense. I mean, you've already learned this. You've already been taught this. Okay? So each of you has learned how to control your body in a way that is holy and honorable. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're doing it, okay? But they've learned it. The problem is we don't always live up to what we know, right? Yeah. And then in verse 5, he says that we aren't supposed to live like the pagans. But what did these people come out of? Paganism. Yeah. So he says, you can't live the way you used to live. If pagans lived lives of gross sexual sin because they do not know God, then Christians must behave completely differently because we do know God. And verse 6 says that we must not commit sexual sin against our brothers and sisters in Christ. He uses the word wrong there. Do not wrong one another. To wrong someone literally means to go beyond the prescribed boundaries with them. Uh, to take advantage means to get something for yourself at the expense of another. That's the idea there. And he says, that shouldn't be happening in the church. And here's the key. He says, God called us to live holy lives. Overcoming sexual sin, or ongoing, any ongoing sin for that matter, is not just about resisting the sin, but it is about pursuing holiness. It is not about turning away from idols, but it is about turning to God. Why? Because you can turn away from sin without turning to God. But you can't turn to God. Without turning away from sin. 